Guys, so a couple things real quick. Uh, what's the hardest part of being a, a dog trainer? And what would you call yourself? I know you say you're a human trainer, but what's the hardest part, man? <laughs> the business side. <laughs> um, the dogs are really easy. They want to work for you. They want to please you. That's what they were bred and designed for. So getting the people to understand why the dog is doing A, B, and C is probably the hardest part. And then making it make money. <laughs> and, and so from a business standpoint then, how much, how big is the opportunity when it comes to training people's dogs? Um, well, this this man that's a little smarter than me said $100 million, so it's a big, big market for it. And we just got to get in and tap in and figure out our place. And, and mind you people, that number is predicated on the fact that it's not the training part, it's the education. And so many other components that go to it, believe me. It is not like, oh, I'm going to train this dog and do that number. No, it's it's a brand. It's a business. It's so many things that we're working on uh, as we fi figure out how to build communications. Jamil, what's one of the things you learned that basically got you to walk down this road with him via getting your own dog? Uh, well, I guess personally is the commitment to actually have to, having to do something. And it can go back to even with trying to train a dog for somebody that it's not going to take it's going to take a commitment that you have to do but i guess per, i'm just myself personally it just helped me just grow myself more it's not really about the dogs it's really more about me <laughs> and so then what have you learned about yourself uh that if i commit to something that could happen <laughs> it's yeah. not, you see you had some commitment issues huh well yeah like just sticking to something you know just yeah and it's doing something different. So guys, a lot of times what I've learned is when people can't a lot of times see this stuff through is, is, is again, if you don't have a vision for it. You know, imagine, remember when we were kids, everybody said, don't play them video games that make you dumb and waste of time. Now it's a kid making $6 million playing video games. People twitch, twitching, uh, making mad money, $200,000 a month doing video games. I bet they're like, look, boy, you better go play that game <laughs> and get good at it. So many things people look at the wrong way, or in some cases, sometimes the market lacks maturity. I've been talking about that quite a bit. So the market matured, and now every NBA team has a gaming team. You say, oh, it don't sound too crazy now, because a lot of those kids, aka young athletes, grew up playing games. So it's a way to connect to even a younger audience, while also basically getting more people to watch the NBA, especially from the NBA 2K standpoint. At any point, being a dog trader is not the hard part. Being a businessman is. Yeah. And sometimes Very that's where so. it can get confusing too. You go, man, this this thing, I'm, I'm making money. I'm helping a lot of dogs. Something's not, something's off still. Yeah. Because I'm doing a lot of work and it needs to scale because you can only do so more, only do so much work in 24 hours, yeah. regardless who you are. Like, and we have to figure out how to scale to even more people because we got people in london they're like oh we love what you do we want to work with you and it's like going overseas is a whole adventure in itself and if we can have like that online program and having the clear communication everything and package it up ship it overseas that'd be a lot easier and then everybody can eat there you go so people stay tuned take care of your dogs we're going to continue to highlight and share moments like this where we're all trying to figure out how to be a little bit more be a little bit better and not isolate us to a box one of the, my favorite things i know again people don't like gay but he said you know when they were basically looking down on him at becoming a designer per se he said don't marginalize me you know we get marginalized sometimes based on our color sometimes based on what we do and what i'm doing and got nothing to do what i'm going to do you know, what I did doesn't define where I'm going either. So as I tell him, and I've told him many times, you, uh, you can't get bit the rest of your life. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have two bad elbows, a bad shoulder, two bad hips, some terrible, some terrible knees, uh, and, and, and then still have nothing to show for other than some scars and some wounds. And it's not sustainable. So when you look at any business model, you say, how do we sustain this? How do we grow this? What can we do to change things? So stay tuned, take care of your dogs, and as always, thank you for watching.